Okay, guys, we're at the uh, bridge here where we had put this pocket or this blind set in, and we got ourselves a coon here. Didn't didn't catch it by much by the looks of it, but been waiting for us, so that's all that matters. And uh, let's reset our foothold here. Kink it up and make it hard to uh, rerun up the. There we go. And a lot more fresh coon tracks there, so we're just going to reset this. Better in there nicely. We're good to go on that one. And this is our, well, you can't see it's water so dirty. This is where we had our 150 cotta bear. Nothing in it, but it was fired. So we're going to reset that. Just like that, we got a rock here, we'll move back into place. There's a rock there or something. Here's gonna put a rock here and use that to stabilize it a little better. That's all we're gonna do there. I have one more pocket set down here. Let's see if we got anything. It's absolutely beautiful out. It's middle of November and on opening water, everything was froze up. A little, little little sloughs were froze up on water opener and uh, now the water just here the temps just warmed up and it's super nice but I think we're gonna be in the 20s soon so I'll probably pull all my traps this weekend and here doesn't look like we have anything my trap was fired so nothing there I'll reset this and we'll move on to the next set. Okay, next location here. Looks like we have a beaver here on the drowning rod. And uh, the mink set was fired off. Reset this. It looks like the beaver had moved the drowning rod here. Um, so I'm wondering if it, that's what had happened on this mink set here. Let's work that up. Let's put this back in there. And uh, rebait and lure it here. to go. This beaver rod I think had came loose so we're gonna check everything here and make sure we're good to go. Uh, I had got caught up. Yeah it looks like it had got caught up in the stake here.
So this is the set I had caught the small beaver in before. We gotta kinda have it at an angle down this way so it drowns so it's deep enough. There we go. Let's see if we can get her in all the way here. Perfect. Put that lock up. And I forgot the beaver lure in the truck, so I'll have to grab that. And I'll, once I'm done, I'll relure this. And then we gotta work on getting this back together here. They might get tangled up again, but this is what it is. This is the only uh, deep spot right here, but that stake ain't coming out. And we'll check our other pocket set. And we got a raccoon floating there. So this is with the new lure we got. And this is a pretty good size one too. So Bridger one and a half, we caught it in. There we go. Not much for grass here to use as a clump. This new lure, um, Very greasy, hopefully you can see that. Very greasy base. And uh, there's a good strong smell to it. And we'll probably call it money printer. So we'll have that available. We just need labels. And I've been running it all year, so. I've been sending it out to some other people to give a try. So here we go, we'll shove that in there. And we're good, so I will uh, Grab the coon, grab the beaver, relure that beaver set, and onto the next spot. Okay, we're at the next location. And uh, here's that pocket. And another beaver, you can see where the beaver are just running up. Um, but they're obviously coming to the pocket here. This is that money printer lure I just showed you. Yeah, Bridger one and a half. So this is the second beaver we've gotten out of here. Okay, that's in good. And we'll just reset it here. Really like to catch a mink, that's what I've been hoping for. But so far, no luck. This is a little crawdad set, that's what you want to call it. Let's put some more lure. That hole kind of got destroyed, but it'll work. There we go. Yep, 
Yeah, these beaver are just are pretty small, but what do you do? Oh, here we go. And uh, this is crazy, another beaver. This time a little bit better size to it. Back foot catch, barely hanging on. Now I do like to putting the T-bars on the bottom here because they'll wrap up around it. And I uh, say you get something like a beaver, like a mink, coon, muskrat, they'd all drown very easy. Um, these beaver, obviously we're not really setting up for them. I just didn't think there's that many here. But these T-bars, if you leave a little bit sticking out, number one, they're easier to pull. And uh, they can be kind of hard on these slide wires, this eighth inch cable. But anyhow, whatever you're trapping, if you leave a little bit of T-bar stakes sticking out above the ground, uh, they'll wrap the trap up. And drown faster. Go. I still see my bait in there. I'm just going to relure it. We're good to go. On to the next location. Okay, we're at the next location. And it looks like we have a coon floating there. Nice one too, look at the size of that. And uh, this was from a pocket. The stake jumped back in there. Good. Check. Let's reset this bad boy. The coon catch has been way down this year. Other local guys I've talked to said the same thing. I don't know if they got distemper or what, but it's just way down. There's a, looks like my bait's still in there. There's just no small ones really. Everyone I've caught for the most part has been in a large um, so I'm not sure what the scoop is but it's been a little disappointing that's why I haven't had as many videos there's hard for it to be exciting if you're not catching much that's the way trapping is this one looks like it got set off could have been that beaver working there but we got some beaver traps here so we'll check those on the other side This is an old Northwoods. I love these old traps. Got them when I first started trapping. And we're just gonna put a little stick right there. And then right here, we have that blind set, which has not performed yet. So yeah, great little location here. Pretty much this, this whole river is just really fun to trap. It's easy going. Not super big current or anything. And like this, you know, the beaver are probably crawling up there with the coon and who knows. So it's not not ideal place to have it set. That's why I brought the beaver traps. But yeah, dandy coon. They always look kind of ratty when you pull them out of the water, but it should be nice and prime since it's middle of November. And this side, 
I believe we had everything set over here. Looks like we have something floating. And got a pocket right here. And my trap's still there, so just leave that to work. And then over here we have a beaver set at 330. We got one. Another little guy. So this is why we want to stake it through the chain too, because we have a two bar stake here and you don't want them floating downstream or leave a safety on or something. Have them get away with your trap. This one I had that new, new beaver lure. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. It's a food lure. Take our safeties off. Put it right back where we had her. I did have a little stick I thought I put over. So I'll just put some stuff. Hopefully it'll go down there. And another beaver here with that beaver food lure. If I can get it out of here. this down in there again. And uh, just gonna re bed it here. I did have a little fencing here, not much, just not much to use, but it'll work in, hopefully. There we go. That's, that's good to go. Okay, so we had a beaver at the last location and right here, the drowner, on the other side of the pocket set nothing in it. Here, the drowner, there's no trap in the pocket. So we're gonna pull it up, see if we got anything. And uh, another beaver. Reset this here. This place is just jam packed full of beaver. So, it'll definitely be spring beaver trapping here. Watch for those videos, they'll be up this spring, April sometime.
Shove our grounder back in there. And uh, looks like my bait's still in the back of the hole. A little glob of lure here. Really hard to catch mink and coon. Uh, and there's a beaver in every pocket set. But I do see something floating over here. It looks like a coon got to the beaver set before the beaver did. But one's been there since then, look at this. Some beaver chewings. Oh. Sometimes these steaks, this gumbo type mud really hard to get out. Another nice coon, deep back foot in a 750. Coon must have got here before the beaver did. One problem with gauntlets I don't like is they always get stuck right there. Yeah, very nice coon today. Let's see if we can pop the grounder in again. There we go. Just refence this a little bit, and uh, look at that. I think that must have been the beaver that drug it up. I don't think I accidentally got mud up there. So let's we'll use this stick, a little eye peel. Get our 750 set here. Get her bed tight. And we'll throw some of that lure again. Surprised I haven't caught a mink, or uh, well, I'm surprised I haven't caught a mink, but when all the sets are clogged up, it's pretty hard. I haven't even caught a muskrat yet, which is surprising. <clears throat> I'm gonna be checking 60 or 70 of them. It's getting dark, I hope I can film. Or not dark, but the sun's going down. It's a ways away yet. I'm hoping I can film some. Now, like, if I'm trapping something like this, um, I don't just go up on the rocks, you know, and just walk. You know, we have right-of-way trapping here, but that's private land, so we got to go up in the right-of-way, exit the water. So it lies in Minnesota. One guy asked in the last video, he said, well, sorry, I'm out of breath. I've been running, trying to beat the daylight here, but he says, why are you pulling out muddy, wet coon when you can be trapping, trapping them on land? Well, that's, oops, that's why I do trap plenty on land. Um, but to be legal, we gotta stay in the water. And also, if you're on land, you know, I wouldn't be catching these beaver. And uh, unless I was doing a trail, I wouldn't be catching mink, and I wouldn't be catching muskrats. So, I'd rather deal with wet or muddy coon, or otter, deal with wet or muddy coon and uh, have the chance at catching all those species instead of just coon. Okay, we're at our last location. Nothing in the pocket set on the other side. And uh, here's the last trap we're checking. And we got something floating. And look at that. We actually got what we came here to catch. Nice mink here. That's super fun. It's been brutal today with all the beaver in these pockets. And uh, I did have a few traps that were set off. Nothing in them. So, not sure what the scoop was there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, ouch, got me. Always has to be the last trap of the, uh, 
Uh, I guess it's about the last of the day. We got 60 or 70 more, but something like that. Like that. Kind of got bent or whatever. You got to really, really have the pan high. Hopefully you can dig her out a little bit. Hopefully the, sometimes when you dig it out like this, oh, adjust my camera a little bit. Sometimes when you dig it out like this, the mud will come down and fill up underneath your pan, then it won't fire, but I don't want that pan sticking out really. And uh, we're pretty much out of bait. So I'll just shove this back there. A little eye appeal. And I'll grab it when I pull this weekend. Oh, wrong lure. I'll grab it when I pull this weekend. I don't know if I'm gonna do one or two more checks, we'll see. There's that money printer lure. Give her a gob of that in there. And we should be good. You know, of all the stuff you can catch, I think mink are probably my favorite. It's just something, you know, they're a little harder. It's not like a coon where you get a bunch or a muskrat. Um, there's something about walking up to a mink floating in a trap that honestly just never gets old. Kind of a mess but here's the back of the truck looks like we got four coon for sure a mink one two three four five six seven beaver um three four five six seven yeah seven beaver so pretty good day we really didn't have that many traps out and uh just short little line but collected some fur